I have another antenna that was sent to me, and this one is an NFID half wave. These have become ham favorites since Poda became such a big thing. So let's take a look at it up next. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WV7W. And the good folks at Guzzi Zoo have sent me another antenna to take a look at. This one is an NFED half wave that is supposed to work on all bands from 80 meters all the way up to 10 meters. And it can handle 150 watts of single sideband power. For CW and digital, it can handle up to 100 watts. Now, it comes in this nice little bag, and I suppose you could use it portable, but it is pretty big and heavy for that, in my opinion. I would say it would be great antenna for like field day or some other event where you're going to be set up for a while. Now, I don't know if I would use it for POTA, but I suppose you could. It's just a bit big and heavy for me. I typically run QRP, so I don't need such a beefy antenna. Now, it looks to be very well built and weather sealed. The transformer box is made of this durable plastic, and it has a recess that covers the end of your PL259, which is nice. Now, the wire looks to be about 16 gauge, but I don't know for sure. It does appear to be of good quality, and the way that they routed it is nice, so there's some strain relief on it. Now, it has this coil near the transformer end, which is supposed to provide better matching at the higher bands. Now, this antenna uses a 64 to 1 on Unvice, the more typical 49 to 1 variety. Now, I set this up at home and replaced my 83 foot random wire with it. Now, it's basically an inverted V configuration, but I've had to do a 90 degree dog leg for the last 25 feet or so, as my yard is just not wide enough. Now, the matching transformer box is mounted on the top of this piece of TV mast. At the top of the mast, I also have my Tempest weather station. The wire then goes up to my 33-foot fiberglass MFJ mast. I actually use the wire from the random wire antenna for a halyard to hoist it up. Now, I'll probably eventually run it properly at the top, but for now it works. The reason I didn't take the mast down and do it properly is I have to borrow my buddy's extension ladder, as mine simply does not go high enough to reach the mount. At the far end, I put up another 10-foot piece of antenna mast and put some nylon line to make a loop to run the wire through where it makes the final 90-degree turn. The last segment attaches to the corner fence post with some nylon line running through the insulator. Now I'll probably put up a piece of PVC pipe or something to raise the end up a bit. After I got it all set up, next was to run some SWR sweeps with my rig expert AA55. I started with 80 meters with a minimum SWR of 1.57 and the band edge is at about 2 to 1. Next was 40 meters and that one has a minimum of 1.08 to 1 with the entire band being less than 1.5 to 1. Now 30 meters is the one exception and this one will probably need a tuner. Even with a minimum of 2.4 to 1 at the bottom, the band is still below 3 to 1 so most built-in tuners will do fine with this. 20 meters looks really good too. The minimum of 1.01 .01 and the highest being 1.5 to 1. 17 meters isn't too bad either with a minimum of 1.45 to 1 and the top of the band being just over 1.5. 15 meters has a minimum of 1.21 at the bottom of the band going up to about 1.5 to 1 at the top of the band. Now 12 meters starts about 1.33 at the bottom going up to 1.5 at the top. 10 meters you can get away without a tuner at the bottom of the band at 1.48, but it goes over 2 to 1 as it gets near the top. Still very usable with a typical auto tuner built into most rigs. Next I decided to put on the air and get some real world testing done. Now the first thing I did was run through the bands on my typical CW frequencies and saw how the SWR looked at the radio. All except for 30 meters are usable without a tuner, and this made me pretty happy because with the random wire, I had to use a tuner on all of them. Then I decided to throw a couple CQs out on 20 meters to see what the RBN gave me, and I got spotted with a 17 dB. But even more impressive is that right after that, I had W0USC come back to me with a 579, and we had a nice QSO. Then right on his heels, I had N5RRL come back to me with 559. It was pretty weak, but copyable, and I switched between this one and the DX Commander. 
Now the DX Commander picked him up a little bit stronger, but this is not surprising due to the fact that the low height above the ground I could get this. The DX Commander just has a better takeoff angle due to being a vertical. Now I think I could get a little better performance if I could get it up a bit higher, but we worked with what we have. At least I know I can get on the air and work all of the bands that I use. So what do I think of this thing? Overall, I'm very impressed with the quality and the fact that I can use it on almost all of the bands without a tuner. That is a far cry better than the random wire. I had to use a tuner for all of them. And it's fairly priced. At the time of this video, it cost about $93. And there's a link in the description below. Now it is an affiliate link, so I get a small stipend if you buy it with that link. It doesn't cost you any extra, but if you'd rather, you can search for it yourself and not use my link. I hope you found this useful. And until next time, this is WB7W73.